Now we talk about light bulbs. Well, light bulbs have illuminated rooms for a long time and also served as indicators such as when a device is on or when there is an error condition. Here are some light bulbs. This type with a screw holder. A mains type with wire on. Oops, another one there as well. Like so. A neon type light bulb. So we've got a very odd shaped one, a bit like it's been squashed. Um, and then you've got like the opposite type. Now the light bulbs wires of course are very convenient for soldering because you shouldn't solder straight to a light bulb because it would blow. Otherwise you need to use a bulb holder. Now as well as the size and the amount of light a light bulb gives off, light bulbs are rated by the maximum voltage and current they can withstand. I don't know if you better quite pick up, but usually on the side they write those ratings on there. Now, light bulbs are usually designed to work on AC or DC. So, for example, this type of light bulb is designed to be connected straight to the mains. Whereas this one is a low voltage DC type light bulb. Now, light bulbs work by passing the current through the filaments inside and that heats up so much that it gives off light. Light bulbs do have a number of disadvantages. If you look at like this one for example, it's made of glass, if that's to break it would be dangerous. And also they waste a lot of energy, they give off a lot of heat compared to the light. Light emitting diodes, LEDs, a type of diode that give off light when current is passed through them. LEDs, like ordinary diodes, have two connections called anode and cathode. Normal LEDs will only light when the anode is more positive than the cathode, which is known as being forward biased. There are two ways to identify the connections of the LEDs. If I just go on to show you. If you buy an LED brand new, the longer lead will be its anode and the shorter lead will be its cathode. Also, if you look inside, usually the shorter bit is the anode and the longer bit is the cathode. LEDs are very popular and very much replaced the light bulb in many types of equipment as they are smaller, more energy efficient, last longer and are less dangerous, made from a type of plastic. However, they do not typically illuminate as wide area as light bulbs and so are often clustered with other LEDs as you can see in this LED torch for example. Also, LEDs work on a much lower voltage and current than most light bulbs, which means they can be damaged more easily and so are not so well suited to higher voltage circuits. LEDs come in a wide range of shapes, colours and sizes. You get all sorts of different colours like red, yellow, green, orange, blue and white. You can get some very small size LEDs, like this size, like a couple of millimetres, right up to like 20 millimetres. As for shape, there are the sort of traditional bulb shape, and then there's more like rectangular type shape, and also I can get it like a triangular type shape. As mentioned, the common type of LEDs light up when forward biased, but by colour LEDs light one colour when forward biased and another colour when reverse biased, that is, cathode more positive than the anode. By colour LEDs are good for polarity detection, which I'm 
Now I'll show you a bicolor LED. So see at the moment it's lighting up green. So if I just disconnect the power and turn the LED around. Now I'm going to reconnect the power. I see it's now lit up red. I don't think that's showing up that well. Okay, the tricolor's LED is similar, but it has a common anode or common cathode and can light one or two colours or a third colour by lighting up both colours at the same time, which I'm going to show you. So we have the tricolour LED here, that's the bicolour, this is tricolour. So, one colour, you see it's green, other colour it's red. Now if I combine the green and red together, I think it's shown up too well, but it comes up should be like a yellowy type colour. Uh, other type of this, uh, other type of LEDs you can get are RGB LEDs which can light up a wide range of colours. And you can also get these bar graph type displays LEDs. A group of LEDs that can show things like volume and so on just arranged in a line. When using LEDs, it's important that you do not expose them to too high current. Small LEDs of about 5mm typically, typically require around 20 milliamps. The usual way to limit the current is by using a resistor in series with the LED. Different colour LEDs and the high brightness type typically require slightly higher, and higher current, so be sure to check that out. For example, I have a number of LEDs here I've brought and I've written on them the stated values by the manufacturer. So for example, I've got here 1.8 millimeters, 2.1 volts, 20 milliamps. Here I have 5 millimeters orange. MCD is the brightness, so the higher the number, the brighter the LED. 1.9 to 2.1 volts, so it's a range. Uh, in their LEDs, that's kind of obvious. But yes. So what I want to explain now here is across the LED will be a voltage drop. So for example, 2.1 volts. But I'm running this off 9 volts. So where's the rest of the voltage going to go? So the resistor not only limits the current, but also creates the remainder of the voltage drop across it to protect the LED. Now LEDs can be arranged into patterns allowing us to display information and one of the most common types of LED display is the seven segment display. The seven segments are arranged into a figure eight and by lighting combinations of these LEDs we can form letters, numbers and symbols. To lower the number of connections needed Either the LED cathodes are connected together as a common cathode connection or the anodes are connected together as the common anode connection. Each segment should be protected by its own limiting resistor. So for example here we see two zeros. Now the segments are usually labelled A, B, C, D, E, F and G. So to light a zero we light all the segments apart from G. And if I advance by 1, we now got B and C lit to form the number 1. Now the seven segment LED display was particularly useful in the early days of computing as it could display hexadecimal which uses 0 to 9 and A to F. Note however that some letters cannot be displayed in a certain case and some letters cannot be displayed at all, at all or could be confused with a number. For this reason, unfortunately I haven't got one to show you, but you get 14 and 16 segment displays which can show characters much uh, better. Now, when there are multiple digits in one display, such as this type commonly found in alarm clock radios, they are typically multiplexed, which means each display is rapidly turned on and off while presenting the correct combination of segments. 
which gives the illusion that all the groups of segments are lit at once. To be able to display images and clearer text, you could use an LED dot matrix display, which consists of a number of LEDs arranged in rows and columns, forming a grid. These LED dot matrix displays are commonly used as information displays at train stations and on buses, for example. They have the advantages that the display can be seen well both in the light and dark. Some LED dot matrix displays like this one only have a single colour for each LED, but others can have two or more colours for each LED. Typically, these LED dot matrix displays are part of a unit containing a control chip, as can be seen on the back here. So, with this type of display module, we can send it commands and the chip will automatically light up the correct combination of LEDs. And this type of LED module is designed to be connected to another one. So, commands come in here and they can also feed into the next uh, display. If you are trying one of these displays out for the first time, I recommend using an Arduino or similar uh, type of system so you can quickly try out and get right the timing and send in the correct commands and so on. Another type of display technology is the liquid crystal display, LCD, which works by blocking light as opposed to LEDs which give off light. LCDs have the big advantage that they use very little power, but because they do not give off light it can be difficult to see what is being displayed. To get around this LCDs typically have some form of backlight usually one or more LEDs. Like LED displays, LCDs can be of the segment or dot matrix form, and some LCDs have a number of special symbols that can be displayed. Now, a very common type of LCD, which is a dot matrix display, but can only display characters and limited symbols, uses a HD44780 standard referring to the controller chip used like one I have here so this is actual LCD module it contains the controller chip on the back so you can send it commands and it will display things on screen it's known as an intelligent LCD which doesn't mean that it knows what you're thinking and it make you a cup of tea when you're feeling down and so on but no you can through the, this bus here these connections you can tell it to display characters to clear the screen to move scroll and so on and it will automatically do that for you just send the commands or characters so these come in all different sizes and number of characters that can be displayed as mentioned it uses a HD44780 standard so even if it's a small display or a big display it all uses the same standard and these type of displays you find in fax machines and all sorts of stuff you know if you ever see get hold of prints or something that's been thrown out you can probably get one of these from it and they have usually have 14 connections if it has one of 14 it's the extra connections for the back line what I have here is a little uh, sort of prototype board I put together so I've got an LCD module here now unfortunately text isn't that clear I haven't added support for backlight yet but basically we have a number of switches for moving forward and back through menus and an OK switch to enter the option here I have a connector here which I'll come back to in a moment but as you can see underneath there is a microchip it's a PIC microcontroller a microcontroller is a simple computer on a chip so what happens is this microcontroller updates the display so it sends commands to it to tell it what to display and so on and also responds to 
the switch presses. This connector is for reprogramming the microcontroller so I can put new firmware onto it. So I just connect up my programmer, which is also connected to my computer. And then we just got the power supply. So I don't know how well you can see, but it says timer. So if I move forward, that goes on to the next option, which is version. So if I press OK, it tells you the version number, which I can't really see very clearly. But so to demonstrate, uh, actually practically using this LCD module. Now I'm going to talk about dot matrix LCD displays commonly known as graphic LCDs in which we can display graphics and better looking text such as with italics and bold and so on. Here I have a really nice uh, graphics LCD 320 by 240 pixels capable of lots of different colours and with a touch screen uh, too. This um, particular LCD module is connected to an Arduino Mega. Now an Arduino is a microcontroller development platform. I can write software for it, download it to the Arduino and in this case it will update the display and respond to the touchscreen. It is quite similar to the PIC microcontroller. So here on the side of the LCD we have the interface, it's got a lot more connections than the other LCD you saw and as you can see absolute maze of wires. So this particular interface is a parallel interface so it can send multiple bits at once but on the downside it requires a lot of wires. I've downloaded some code on the Arduino just to uh, try it out as I'm going to show you now. So using a starless like so, I can. Oh, is that clever? No, not really, but it's nice anyway. The thing you should better notice is how inaccurate it is. It's not just the way I'm doing it. It is. It's a resistive touchscreen, which works by pressure. It's nice, but it's not terribly accurate. Uh, you can get much better touchscreens that are capacitive, uh, though they work on electrical charge like from your finger. The downside of them, you can't use them when wearing gloves, unless they're a special type of gloves. But this is just to demonstrate that a nice setup we have of a colour LCD with a touchscreen that responds to me drawing on it. Now this particular LCD wasn't that expensive but it has a huge number of features. So we've got a colour LCD, we've got a touch screen and also at the back, I'll just briefly show you. Let's turn that round. There's also an SD slot for an SD card which the Arduino can also read. Uh, so the idea is you store images on the SD card which slots in the back and then you've got a nice amount of storage. So there you have an example of an LCD graphics display.